is Sarah Block, editor. I'm here with Felix Norden, one of your Neo Tokyo leads. This series of interviews is designed to introduce citizens to their community leads and council members. So we're going to jump right in. First of all, welcome, Felix. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Thank you for having me, Sarah. Great. So roll us off once more with your, uh, I say pre-crypto background, but how about uh, just your background in general? Because I know you've been in crypto for a long time. Sure thing, sure thing. I mean, I got first exposed to crypto while in university. Uh, so for those who don't know what my background is, I am a software engineer by trade. Um, I have a master's in machine learning and AI uh, and generally a very mathematics heavy background. Um, and I got first exposed to crypto uh, through one of my upperclassmen who I also did a lot of courses with, uh, who uh, basically was very, very interested into blockchain and Ethereum in particular, because he was saying that that is the future. And that was late 2017, early 2018. Um, and he basically said that I should get involved when I can. So I did. That was at the end of the 2017-2018 the bull run. So the, the Ethereum that I bought went down the gutter and I didn't touch it much for, for a while until we hit more interesting times in 2020, 2021 again. Um, but yeah, that, that friend of mine is also pretty cool. He, he has actually contributed code to the EVM uh, itself, which is basically meaning that he has contributed source code to something that is running Ethereum, uh, that's running any EVM compatible blockchain out there and so on, which is pretty, pretty dandy. Um, when I got back into things in 2021, that was when NFTs were the, the hottest shit. And with that, I got deeper and deeper into that area and uh, heavily influenced by Alex Becker at the time because I'd followed him for a few years. And yeah, that's basically how I got involved with Neo Tokyo as well. So him talking about everything that he was building there got me introduced to trying to solve all the clue, clues and riddles that he was putting out there. and had a lot of fun doing so, met a lot of good friends, and the rest is kind of history. Here we are, and today I'm one of the people that are lucky enough to to lead the community that is Neo Tokyo. And um, you have some some pretty fancy degrees. So how how did you get on this um, tech background? How how far back did your interest in in computers and all that go? Um, I've always had an easy time understanding things in general, um, technology in particular. I started building my own computers when I was around 11, 12, um, and basically had like summer jobs and so on at, at hardware stores and so on uh, for tech, basically PC repair stores and so on, um, and got more and more fascinated with a lot of different things uh, just from genuine interest. I, I started getting deep into computer software through uh, Photoshop and photo rendering and uh, photo editing. I started with Photoshop and I think I was eight and did that for like six, seven years, quite, quite vividly, um, along with a lot of gaming and so on. And then I didn't really touch coding and software on that aspect until I was 15 or 16. And then following that, I got deep down into the trenches there, I did some distance courses, some MOOCs, massive on, open online uh, courses. Uh, the first one I did was CS50X, which at the time was quite wonky, but now it's like one of the best courses out there. So people who want to learn coding for free, go do that one. Um, and then I stood at the precipice when it came to making a decision from high school. Uh, and I was either going to become a doctor or I was either going to go into engineering. And in engineering, I was looking to do the best thing for my career, which uh, looked to be uh, civil engineering or uh, mechanical engineering, uh, which uh, I ended up not going to just because my, my uncle told me, who's, who's an engineer? He is... Um, he's been working within Saab in Sweden for, for many, many years, had very high level positions there. And he basically told me that it doesn't matter what, 
what actual engineering degree you take. It's more about showing that you actually have the certificate because you've shown them that you've survived and you're able to adapt to hard problems. That's the key thing with engineering. So with that said, I chose then the the course that was the most interesting to me, which was software and, and tech. Um, and I went to one of the uh, best universities in Sweden, Chalmers for that. Um, I was taking interviews and so on at, at Cambridge and so on before then. I decided not to go because I didn't want to go into heavy debt. So yeah, <laughs> that was an easy decision in Good the end. Choice. Sorry? Good choice. Not to yeah, take on the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, fortunately in Sweden, um, all university education is kind of subsidized by the government or all the taxpayers per se. Um, but it makes it very accessible for everybody. So it's it's very good for people from humble beginnings like myself to get into um, anything that is of interest. And it's also very good then to help get a well-educated population. Um, so yeah, I was I was fortunate enough to to graduate from high school with the highest grades of uh, the whole school. Uh, and then when I got into my bachelor's, which was software engineering at the time, I did a lot of hard grinding there, making sure that I was at top of my class there as well. Um, was fortunate enough there as well to basically take a stab at the benefits that we had to uh, and do extracurricular activities and so on as well. And um, managed to clear bachelors with uh, basically straight A's, uh, which i was also very fortunate to have the luck to do so. Very, very good teachers and I basically found a good studious methodology to go that down that uh, path. Um, and when it came to applying for, for the masters, I wanted to go for what was the best thing for my career, which at the time was the new unicorn, which was big data, AI and machine learning. And that was also one of the reasons why I was set, dead set on getting the highest grades. So I wouldn't have much of a, it wouldn't be a hard time. People wouldn't have a hard time deciding on if I would get in or not. So I got in there uh, for the first, uh, basically the pilot year and uh, kept grinding there. Met a lot of new good friends. I have friends for life there. Uh, one of them is getting married in September, right after Token 2049. So I'm flying to Singapore and then likely flying straight from Singapore to Sweden, then back to China <laughs> uh, over a span of four days. It's going to be crazy. Um, but that's what you do for friends. Um, I love and- it. Yeah, yeah. It's at least going to be good for the flight points. So it's it's gonna gonna, <laughs> I had some traveling, a little vacation time. Yeah. Uh, let's let's get into um, your your entry into Neo Tokyo. Were you were you mm-hmm. a day one mentor? Give me give me the trauma tale. Um. So yes, I am a day one mentor. I got into Neo Tokyo through basically participating in a lot of different communities. Um. I got into one of the the more inner circle groups uh, quite early on from basically showing my my tech knowledge and my savviness there, um, which also let me get a lot of good friends that I still hold on to today. One of them being Bidar, um, where we've come to become best friends th- through Neo Tokyo, which I'm very, very happy about. Um, and a lot of other people. And th- those people know who they are. I love you all. Um, and uh, yeah, we we had a lot of fun. Um, early days as well, when we did the first identity mints, it was very, very interesting. Uh, it was very expensive. I remember when I was supposed to get a very good, rare uh, NFT, which ended up costing me $1,100 worth of gas and I didn't get it, which sucked. And then I got my, my kind of shitty white identity that we have, that I still have to this day. Um, but following that, at that point, when things seemed kind of rigged and so on, when the things that were happening were, were claimed, alleged to happen when it didn't happen, when people were getting banned for odd reasons and so on, I decided that it was time to really make sure that I follow all the rules, but I'm also going to bend the rules as much as possible. So that's when uh, the the whole manipulation of the games and everything started happening, which was a lot of fun. I figured out how to hack the games that we were doing, do a lot of elegant solutions so it was untraceable. Um, and yeah, a lot of people know this about me because that's kind of where where people started noticing me in New Tokyo as a whole. Um, and um, yeah, 
that's, but which, that's which is why like, you're the lead dev today because you could hack your way in right <laughs> basically yeah. uh getting getting to the lead lead dev position was more like a a decision on my end given i was the one who started up the ama division uh, because that was a lot of fun uh but i felt like with with the danner leaving the the tech side to build out mint defense i was thinking that my skill set is probably worth more to help out on that front to help guide the tech side and everything there rather than spending time on amas uh, when there are more appropriate people for doing that as well so that's how i got into the the lead dev position makes sense uh let's let's touch on your current focus so mm -hmm. what where are you spending most of your time and and this can be inside neo tokyo outside neo tokyo um where, where's your where's your day go um right now it is mainly towards my my companies um i currently run three companies which is uh, mure which is the the main one uh, yure which is basically uh, specter rebranded we acquired specter through mure um and it's igneo my dev agency so those are the three main focuses that i have um and then of course new tokyo i'm helping out wherever i can there to make sure that we are in alignment um and helping out wherever I can when it comes to the, the technical questions and problems that we're facing. Um, for those who don't know what, what we do in those other companies, Igneo is a dev shop, as I mentioned. So I have some capable developers there. If anybody needs help, they can always reach out and we give a good transparent quote. We, we really hammer down hard on the good sides to crypto, which is transparency, openness, verifiability, and so on and so forth, to really make sure that the full experience with us is good. Even though we are a bit more expensive, we're also confident in the quality that we put out, which means that long term, it's usually cheaper than if you go with a, a cheap and scrappy uh, dev shop. When it comes to Mure, it's more about hardcore um, transactional infrastructure, basically making blockchain from a transactional standpoint more accessible. So what we mean by that is that we are building services to automate things like bookkeeping, keeping track of who is investing in what when it comes to fundraising or what payments you are doing, if you want to have uh, Web3 based payment solutions and so on and so forth. Um, and trying to provide that to many different communities out there or projects that are just looking to step into the realm of, of crypto and payments um, rather than uh, having to jump through into the deep end when you don't necessarily have to because smart contract development and so on is hard and and risky okay i think this next question is sort of obvious it is your main expertise and we realize you are the expert on development but um give us a little rundown of your expertise and like why why a citizen might want to reach out to you um i think the main the main reason to reach out to me is that I have a lot of experience. I'm coming up on, what is it? I think 11 years uh, professional experience, part-time and full-time, that is, uh, into software de development and so on in general. And I've worked everywhere throughout the software stack. I've done front-end development. I've done back-end development. I've done full stack. I've done machine learning in AI within Amazon. Um, I've done a lot of blockchain these days as well, and everything in between to build end-to-end -end solutions. Mm -hmm. So if people have questions when it comes to solving problems, be it on-chain or off-chain, I'm more than happy to help. And I think that's where a lot of my capabilities can come into play. Um, I think apart from that, it could just be for, for general advice in general and so on as well, because I'm building up a lot of experience when it comes to running companies and who to trust and not to trust in, in Web3 and so on as well. Um, so I'm more than happy to share that experience with people. And uh, otherwise, if you ever have any questions regarding Neo Tokyo, the tech side or anything outside, I'm always happy to, to chat. Excellent. And here's here's one to weed out people. What what do you hate working on? So what should somebody not contact you for? Uh, what do I hate working on? I mean, um, that's a tough one. It I, is. I, I really do enjoy helping people, but I think that I think there are definitely more appropriate people to. Uh, answer a lot of questions. For example, 
marketing, um, outreach and so on, that's, I can do it, but I don't like doing it. So anything marketing related or outreach related and so on, I don't enjoy doing at all. Uh, and if there, if there's one thing I've learned is that the two main things when it comes to success in web three, it is product and marketing. So I'm good at building products. I'm terrible at marketing. I have good people in my network to do that for me and do that with me. So if you ever have questions about reaching out to them or if getting a recommendation, I can do that, but don't ask me to do any marketing. Excellent. I like it. Good answer. Um, so for those who don't know, what are you sort of most known for in Neo Tokyo or, or what have you done? Ooh, um, that's a great question. Uh, I think, I'll split it up into two answers. I think from, from a legacy perspective, like OG, I'm mostly known for being that person who hacked all of the games. Um, but that's only for, from day one minters, day one minters. Um, when it comes to the um, more of like current day and exposure, not necessarily people are aware of this, but I was one of the core contributors for Bytes 2.0. And both from a tokenomics perspective, uh, I'm one of the authors of that. And I'm also one of the implementers of everything when it came to migrating the collection to uh, Bytes 2.0 and upgrading all the NFTs and so on and so forth. So I worked very, very closely with Thrasher when we did that. Um, so I think that's where I have most exposure towards people. People have used those things a lot, even though they don't necessarily know that I've been deeply involved in it. Absolutely true. I mean, I, even me, I, I, I sort of know you're there somewhere doing something, but yeah, I wouldn't have tagged the two together. Uh, so uh, next question, why join the leads? What, what was your, what was your purpose behind joining um, up with the team? I really we, want to make, yeah. I mean, I, I've been part of the lead since, since early on. Um, I, I, Neo Tokyo has helped me so far in my journey. Neo Tokyo has kind of been my stepping stone into going full time Web3 to be able to grow and so on. Um, and given that we, since day one, kind of are left to our own uh, devices to figure things out, it helped establish a strong bond between me and many others, many others in there. And I built many, many good relationship with the leads. Um, and we just genuinely want to make Neo Tokyo a better place. I think that's the main driving force. We we feel like Neo Tokyo is is our home in the crypto space, and we really want to make sure that it succeeds. Because if it succeeds, we know that we will succeed. So I think that's the main reason why I still to this day am am one of the leads, and I still enjoy jumping onto the meetings every week and so on. Um, joining it was partly because of the reason that I was leading the AMA division and wanted to make sure that, well, it was taken seriously and that everybody was respectful of us doing so many AMAs. So I remember when uh, I was originally in the the Alex Becker leads thing, was me, Vidar, and a couple of others. And then the the leads group was something that came up underneath the, the hood or behind the shadows or in the shadows. And I was reaching out to fire some about it. I was like, okay, what? What's the deal here? Why do we have two different groups? And why am I not included in the, the what is now called the leads group and so on? And then after that, I was invited. And then the, I've been in there since then, since then. And it's an amazing group. I've only recently joined, but um, what's going on behind the scenes? When, once you get a vision of it, it, you realize how integral that web is that you guys have woven. And, and it's quite impressive to watch. Um, our toughest question of this interview. Okay. We need one word to associate with Felix Norton. And this can be anything. Ooh. <laughs> one word. One word. Now, originally it was going to be something like what you do, marketing, development, and all this, but we've gotten everything. We've gotten feisty. We've gotten yeah. <laughs> all sorts um, of words. I'll, I'll, say, I'll say this, nerd. Um, I love and it. The, the reason for that is because I heard, I don't remember where it was, but I read a tweet a couple of weeks back that was very, very interesting. And it ties to um, the two like primary groups of, of crypto and, and anywhere, basically. Um, and that is the, 
the nerds and then it is the kind of degens and financial aspect side of to it um where, where nerds are the the first core people that are there to build things up and then you have the degens and the finance people that are coming in to make sure that they can uh, get value out of it and they are working symbiotically but also colliding and i'm one of the people that are very passionate about the technology and i really want to make sure that crypto is adopted and succeeds so that's why i'm a nerd rather than i'm being here for just the financial aspect I actually love that word for you, and I'm shocked no one's chosen it already because that's a great one. There, there's some <laughs> the nerds in the office well that <laughs> we should all celebrate them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul is one of them. I think me and Paul, we have a lot of good times together, just geeking about and just having long, calm discussions in VC. I miss those. A fabulous collection of nerds. I love it. Okay, so let's go. Let's go beyond Neo Tokyo for our last question. Um, who are you outside? Mm-hmm of this world of web three and tech? What are your hobbies? What do you like to do? Something we can all relate with. Uh, main hobbies is, is basically building stuff, I would say. So I'm, I'm exploring a lot of new technologies here and there, learning. I'm an avid learner. That's, that's kind of why I am very happy about becoming an engineer as well, because the core thing there is metacognition. Learn how to learn and enjoy it. Um, outside of that, I mean, from a relaxation standpoint, video games, uh, spending time with my fiance. She is more of a gaming geek than I am. So playing games with her is amazing. And then just being a, a good partner and spending time with her and our dogs, I would say. Traveling the world is a lot of fun as well. We've been doing a lot of traveling since getting into crypto. I bet. It sounds like a, a match made in heaven. You've, you've got your game, gaming girl. That's you can't do any better than that. Yes. That's great. That's <laughs> All right. Great. That's it. We're going to wrap this up. This is Sarah, blog editor. Today we had Felix Norden, one of your community leads. And uh, we'll see all you guys soon.